set done. Vandy leads it by one over the Bulldogs on homecoming. <clears throat> I don't even know where to start here. Uh, <laughs> you, you homecoming. Mr. College football, Tony Barnhart. Seven six and a half. Uh, we're we're all awake, right? We're ready to go. What'd you see? You come out flat again. Uh, opening kickoff, you let Vanderbilt run it down to the five yard line. Then on the first play, you commit a penalty, giving them first and goal at the one. Then you let them score to go up seven to nothing. Of course, they haven't done anything on offense since then because Vandy has no offense. Uh, so yeah, I mean, is the defense playing good? Yeah, but we're playing against the worst, one of the worst offenses in the Power Five. Offensively, this is embarrassing. I, I don't understand what's going on with the running game here. I, I don't understand how we can push around South Carolina and run for 300 and something yards against them, but we can't block Nickel State or Vanderbilt. I, I, I mean, I, I don't understand. Half of our run plays this game are for zero or negative yards. I mean, how is this How is this happening from week to week? I don't understand. Um, Jacob Eason looks a little better than last week. I, you know, you, you know what can you say? How could he look any worse? Uh, but, you know, he's, he's not... <laughs> He's not blowing anybody's socks off. I mean, I can tell you that. Um, uh, one thing I do want to say here real quick about Jacob Eason. <coughs> Sorry. A lot of people are complaining and saying, well, he throws the ball too hard. I don't understand. He's throwing the ball too hard. And he, he, he's, he's, got, he's throwing it too hard. Well, listen. Um, last year, when he was playing high school football, with a bunch of receivers who weren't good enough to get a scholarship to, to, to college, and they figured out how to catch balls from Jacob Eason. So how, how about our receivers that are on scholarship figure out the same damn thing? He's throwing it too hard is not a, an excuse for not catching it. So forget that, right? It's just ridiculous. Look at this. Now, I don't even know what this is here. Look at this. Look at this. What are you doing? Who are you? I have no idea who, whose or what dog that is. Must be a stray. I don't know. Uh, coaching. Uh, another F at the end of the half. What are you doing? I, have a plan and stick to the plan. I, I mean, I, I just don't get it. I, I don't understand. You, we get the ball back in the second quarter. Sorry. Whoever's dog that was, people came looking for him. <coughs> Interrupted Uncle Lou, too. Uh, anyway, it's neither here nor there. <coughs> but listen, end of half and end of game clock management. Have a plan and stick to it. We get the ball back with 59 seconds to go in the half. Now, you have two options, and we have one timeout. So you have two options. Either you're going to run the clock out and go to half, or you're going to try to move the ball down the field into, score, into field goal range or, or score. So what do we do? We come out and we run the ball up the middle on first down, which tells me we're giving up. We're just going to you know, run the clock out and, and take it into halftime. Crowd starts booing. We don't call a timeout, so the clock is continuing to run because all we did was run it up the middle. We come out on the next play, and what do we do? Run it up the middle again, right? No. We throw a 40-yard bomb down the sideline to Reggie Davis, who catches the ball. Great. Uh, you know, but I, I don't understand. Where, why wasn't that done on first down? And, and why didn't you call a timeout if that's what you wanted to do? Because now you're stuck on the 40-yard line with one timeout. Now you, you, you throw an incomplete pass, and then Jacob Eason runs it up the middle. Well, uh, <laughs> it, 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 that's just poor coaching. I don't know what else to – I mean, I, I'm just aggravated. I'm just aggravated.